Hi, Amy. Uh, how are you doing? How are you this week? Hi, Dave. How's it going? Yeah, we're good. We're good here. Uh, just finished morning prayer, as always. Uh, and uh, it, and I had have on the balcony now. We used to oh, have been, and I've been on the balcony. Yeah, I, I do feel a bit. What well, should I say that that I've got a balcony? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, in, I was just thinking as you said you've got a balcony. I was like, you are so bougie. I think you know. And I, I compared myself to Julian of Norwich uh, last night at evening. Don't laugh. Evening prayer, uh, you know, that Julian and where she used to sit, where she's inwards into the church and outwards onto the public. And uh, I felt that, 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 you know, I know that's where I was. Um, but, you know, the, it was glorious night last night, so I had it outside. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that, that, that was fun. Um, and morning prayer this morning. Uh, how, have you, how have you been, Amy? I don't, I don't even know where to go from that. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I've been okay. I think it's been a really interesting week for all of us, hasn't it? You know, and um, we were just chatting before we hit record around just quite an overwhelming week, a week of sorrow in our world, a week of anger at the injustices of racism, of a week of self-examination, really. You know, where are we part of the problem? Where has our silence made this worse for our brothers and sisters? And yeah, where do we need to be more vocal about things? And where do we not need to, I guess, pat ourselves on the back for maybe how woke we already think we are, or but actually, how is there still? Sorry, what was that word? Or for how woke we are, for for like oh, how. Fifty-one. Sorry, what does that mean? <laughs> for how for how aware we are of oh. these current situations, but actually, where do we need to do more work? Where do we need to be more explicit? Where do we need to be more not just vocal, but actually move to action around some of this stuff? So yeah, it's been quite an interesting week. There's been some highlights even amidst you know we can talk about that but i think overall i think i feel quite heavy and sad that's that's how i feel and angry angry for times where we haven't got this right angry for the injustice that so many people that i love and care about face every day and just angry that maybe our politicians our leaders globally locally maybe haven't done more um yeah, that's that's how I feel today. What about you? And there's this, there's this. I think what's the word denial? The idea of actually, um, what's you know, what's the problem? You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, and so the people need. I think the idea of people got blinkers on their eyes purely because actually that one, they're denying it, and two, they don't want to see it, and they don't want to hear it, and because because if you do, you know that you're complicit in it, and I think that's and that you'd have to engage. I think people just just disengaging with it and saying actually it's not my problem uh, and unfortunately that's where that's what's happened and that's how it grows and that's how it you know, carries on uh, and it's fuel to the fire right, um, right. So, yeah it's a, there is a burden a heavy heart but but we 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 hold those tensions the idea that we hold the burdens and we and the burden should cause us to do something um, right. uh, and so even though we're, we're, we're Christians and Jesus takes the burden off our heart uh, and, and the sin off onto him. Um, sometimes like lament and lamentations, we need to hold on to them. Uh, actually, the whole, longer we hold on, the deeper uh, uh, maybe our, our anger is and actually causes us to do something. So absolutely. Yeah. But we also, there are some, as you said, there are some highlights and there are some things that we say, actually, this was, this was a God moment or this was a positive yeah. thing in the week. We do, we do, yeah. something out don't we so what was it for you amy what what's the highlight this week yeah i think a really special thing even in the midst of everything that was going on was we had this joint prayer day didn't we with st luke's and ascension church and actually as a place i think for some people felt a sense of peace or a sense of hope even amidst the kind of the way we did it for those who don't know is we made like 48 half an hour slots and encouraged members of both of our congregations to sign up for a slot. We were speaking last week and there was hardly any slots filled and we were like, are we going to just be praying for 20? Will we fill all these slots? What does this look like? And then just in the last couple of days, it really filled, really filled up. Like it was incredible people praying through the day, through the night. Um, and actually, I don't know about you, but kind of had lots of conversations in the run up to that. of Like I really want to join in with this, but I don't know how to pray. How do you pray for half an hour? Will you phone and, you know, lead me through this and kind of say, no, 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 like, there's no set way to do this. Here's some suggestions about how you might want to fill half an hour. But just amazing afterwards to have so many people text and call and be like, 
this was really great. The time went so quickly. I felt peace, even amidst of how I'm feeling. I felt hope, even though I feel hopeless most of this week. Um, and just really powerful to hear people speaking about, you know, I read this psalm or I read this verse or I think this is what God took my attention to. I don't really know what this means, but what do you think this means? I just, it was a really encouraging time, actually, of seeing someone texting me saying, um, this has taught me that sometimes I do just have to step out past the fear. And actually, it was really great. I want to do this more. So, yeah, I think that's a real positive ex highlight. Yeah. And, and, and similar, to, similar to me, I had uh, people, we've got a WhatsApp group here, so people share uh, positive things, people share videos of well, this is a blessing for us uh, and all that going on. And one of the things they shared with me, actually, two different people uh, were praying through different psalms, yet concentrating literally on the same part of the psalm that agreed with each other, Psalm 27 and Psalm 91. Mm. There's a part in that psalm that actually it's the same passage. Uh, where you know to dwell in the house of the Lord, yeah. I think that's that's God working in that absolutely, and 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 yeah, similar. We have peace, people with peace relaxing. I had one comment saying, "I closed my eyes and I opened them, and half hour gone." I hope they didn't fall asleep. <laughs> no, 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 they, they, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. It wasn't asleep. <laughs> Sometimes prayer does that. Actually, we can, mm. and that's a good thing. We can relax uh, in the presence of God, knowing that He's present, and sometimes. We get, you know, and, and, and I say to people when I do evening prayer, sometimes our anxiety, our stress, the burdens of life, what's going on around us can cause us not to be able to sleep. And sometimes our prayer uh, during the evening means that actually we can actually say, no, um, I can, those stress and anxieties have gone down. I've got away, but they've come down and I can, I can sleep and I can rest. So, but there, there is some, I shared with you earlier something that, that you took a half hour slot yourself, I know. Yeah. Uh, so did I, and just you know, Sunday morning. Uh, so I found myself in my half an hour with Frankie, uh, and um, so so Frankie and I began praying together. And um, he was reading Psalm 23, and he was actually in my my small Bible, uh, and uh, he was reading it, and it was great. And, um, and we talked about what it means. And then about a quarter of an hour in, and it was great. And we were looking at we were looking at what it means for us. He said, "Granddad, this is boring." <laughs> and uh, I thought, very honest of him. Um, yeah. But, but, you know, and it, but it, was, it was great. And, and maybe that's a reflection of maybe how people see prayer. Sometimes it's 15 minutes in, and um, this is boring. Uh, but actually, it's the way we approach prayer. It's not a case of, I've got to do this. It's, oh, it's half an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's just being in the presence of God and knowing his presence. And just, you know, yeah, reflecting on a psalm, a bit of music. You know, prayer isn't a one size fits all, is it? It's not, you know, uh, it's just so, yeah, so that was that was quite funny. It was really interesting how many people who took day slots from St. Luke's, I think, ended up perhaps going out on a, on a prayer walk. So I'd written a few suggestions down, I know you use them as well over Ascension, of here's perhaps ideas you might want to use for your half an hour, you know, think about it beforehand, what do you want to pray at right list. But I had said, you know, something that I find really helpful is to prayer walk. Um, and for my half an hour, that's what I did. Like, I left the house early, had worship music in my ears, and was like, okay, God, what do you want to say to me today? You know, I'm, I'm someone that finds it hard to sit still anyway. So it's not a surprise that then when it comes to prayer, I kind of need to be active in how I do it. And actually just encouraging people to go for a walk and be attentive to what it is God might want to say. What, what, what's your eyes taken to? What do you hear differently? Someone said, I was so much more conscious of the birds singing in that kind of line from, you know, God remembers the, the sparrow and so he hears my anxious thoughts too. Do you know, it's really interesting actually when we have maybe been brought up thinking that prayer is about, you know, kneeling by your bed, not moving for 30 minutes. Actually, that's, for many of us, that just isn't natural. So actually, how do we then go on a journey with what is prayer for us? How do we hear God? How do we make space for him? And actually, I think that was one of the quite exciting things about this prayer day that people set aside a particular half an hour and were like, okay, God, what do you want to do? What do you want to say? I don't know what to do. I'm going to read your word and see what happens. And for a lot of people, when we took that step in faith, God did speak small, big, you know, depending... And so I'm excited to see what we can maybe do going forward with this. Is this something we do more regularly? Just a final comment on that. I have people saying that, uh, wow, 
this this was so powerful for me. We should do this yeah. more regularly, more often. And so 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 only when you start <clears throat> maybe stepping out in in this sort of prayer and praying continually, they actually say, actually, yeah, we should do this. It's really powerful. Do it more often. Yeah. So that that was one of the bits of feedback that I had as well. So actually, I, we'll do it do it more often. That's great. That's cool. So. Amy, we are still looking at this book and we're, we're looking at the church uh, in Acts. Uh, and the, obviously on Sunday, it was the, we, we didn't sing happy birthday for the church. Yeah, uh, people do we didn't that. do that. We did sing happy birthday for people's birthdays. No, we had we, loads of birthdays on Sunday. How many did you have? Four, I think. So it wasn't How many? One. Yeah, about four. Oh, so did we. We had four. <laughs> so, um, so, but it was uh, a five. Five. It's not a competition. I know, I know, but I was thinking, no, we didn't, I mean, like, I was thinking I've missed someone, so we had five birthdays, so um, it's yeah. hard to fit five names in. <laughs> like, we, we did it, we did it, and, uh, and obviously we had bits of scripture uh, for it, and, and, and it was great that, that some of them, actually some of them quite pertinent, which is really, really good, as they should be. Um, so, but it was obviously the church's birthday, uh, Pentecost, you know, the Holy host spirit coming down, and the growth of the church beginning with 3,000. Now, if that's not attractional, what is it? Anyway, so, so we look going back and we look at, we look at this book. Uh, yeah. book. You got the book? Mm-hmm. Got it? Uh, and we were carrying on uh, and we were, we were looking at, I think, chapter six and seven. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Uh, and then, um, so Amy, what, what, what came out? Obviously, it's, we're moving on in Acts. We've, we've had Pentecost and now we're moving on. How, what is it, well, how does the church building how is it growing uh what does it look like and what what what's what's shone out for you yeah so, so chapter six is called um playing your part and that's something that for me is just such a key part of what church is supposed to be you know we we t- chatted about this a bit last time but this idea of we're all called to join in like we all have something unique to bring to it so i think last time we ended up talking about like what have you got to bring into this Whereas these chapters focus a bit more about like, what have you got to take out in a sense of it was talking about, you know, where can you play your part? Where is your, we've been talking a lot actually the last few weeks around um, key workers on their, on the front lines against this disease. Whereas this book kind of makes this point about where is your front line and by your front line, like where is your mission field? And actually, I guess the question for us to kind of explore of that is, um, who can you reach? Who do you witness to that other people can't? So I think for quite a long time, the way that church has worked, they've, like it's the church leader's job to reach people for Jesus. Whereas actually that's not the model that early church was built upon. And it's not the model that church, if we're doing it right, should be built upon, right? Because we all have a part to play. We all have gifts to bring, but we all have a purpose of going out. There's people that you know, Dave, that I don't know. <laughs> There's people like, you know, who are the people when we, who are the people we can reach? I remember we have this kind of, um, this story just came to mind, so I'm going to share it if that's all right. But we have this, my gran, you know, the one who turned 90, when she moved into her sheltered housing complex a number of years ago, she decided that she would run Christianity Explored in the sheltered housing complex because people there were not going to come to a course but what she did was she got someone to buy her a dvd player but she still can't work but she could press play and what she did was she had like a number of people that came and just explored in the sheltered housing complex these big questions of life my grand decided that nobody nobody was prioritizing the residents in the sheltered housing complex but she lived there they were her friends and she wanted them to hear about jesus so where is our mission field where's our front line for some of us it's our friends it's our family it's our neighbors it's our colleagues who are yeah. the people that you're called to reach that i will never come into contact with and actually when we see it that way is we all have a part to play coming into church but we all have a part to play going out and when we don't go out and reach the people god's put in our path they're the people that miss out right yeah. no it's it's great and um, on Sunday, we, we, we took uh, the reading from Acts, which talks about mm. the beginning of the church, but also we, talked to, we took a passage from 1 Corinthians 12, when, when Paul talks about, actually, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, he gives gifts, uh, spiritual gifts. Uh, and I picked up on gift, I'm thinking, and there was something in the book uh, which resonated with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to my childhood. Yeah, yeah. 
shared with this is that and people might remember uh, in England, Saturday morning TV in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, it was quality TV. Uh, yeah, uh, but it's, uh, they had this thing called Swap Shop. Okay. And then it was the next season, it was multicolored Swap Shop. And the idea, part of the program, you had all the Saturday morning kid stuff. Part of the program was that you had children who had got a toy or a game uh, and they would say, uh, I'm, I don't, I've got this, I can give this and I need this. Uh, and the idea is that, that actually I, I, I can give this, but also I, I need this. Um, for them, it's want rather than need, but, but let's for the argument's sake. That's what it's. And certainly what we're reflecting actually as, as us, as calling into our workplaces, into our schools, wherever we are, we might feel that actually I've got, I've, I'm in a lot of need here and, and maybe I'm a bit vulnerable and, and so I, I need. And where we're speaking of what can you give, actually I'm in a lot of need. And sometimes that can overwhelm us. And sometimes that can actually overwhelm us so much that we think we've got nothing. Yeah. But actually, the church, they're actually, we've got, you know, we've got different people, they have different needs and they have different gifts. And so we can say, actually, I need this. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I need this so much. But I can give this, which is something different. Right. Uh, that's the early Acts church. And certainly when we look at Acts 2, and we go sort of through that, Acts 2, they held everything in common and they gave everything as of their individual need. So different people need different things, but also different people can give different things and so there is this sense of um this we're living in fluidity uh the idea is actually yes we have some needs but also we can give uh mm. and, and never feel that we we've got nothing to give we all have um and that was great spoke powerfully to me really because i think you know, i know a lot of people think i've just i just need to come to church i just need this i just need this but never feel that they can give something out uh and i think you know, we, we just need to encourage people. It says you've got, you have got something to give. Everyone has. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was something for me. Mm. I love that there was a story in the book of um, a little boy and starfish. Do you remember this story in the book? And this idea, this guy had been walking along the beach and he'd just seen all these little, you know, starfish all over the beach. And he'd come across a boy who was like picking up the starfish and throwing them back in to the sea. Um, and the guy, this is so badly paraphrased, but that's okay. The guy had been like, mate, like, what are you doing? Like, this is too big a task. Like, what are you trying to achieve? And, and the little kid was like, but it makes all the difference for this one starfish. And so kind of seeing it that way, it's so easy. I think, and maybe particularly in a week like this one that has felt heavy, it's so easy to think the task is too big. Like, how do we change this? We can get angry, we can get frustrated we can be filled with sorrow but actually how do we make that commitment today however small the steps we can take might seem they make a difference to then the bigger reality right if if a hundred people had been throwing the starfishes back in and not just one person how much more progress could have been made right but actually we say um at leadership at new me for christ we're on a project called leadership academy um this will make sense in a second and um you know we kind of say the concept of how do we change the world is so big that it can almost paralyze us. We don't know where to start. Whereas actually, if we think about how do we change, there's actually not one world to change. There's like 6.8 or whatever it is, billion perceptions of that world. And when we start with one person, we do then change the world. Does that make sense? That sometimes we think way too big and feel so powerless. Whereas actually when we think, what are the steps I can take today in time that changes the world right it's easy to watch a situation and think what can i do but it's actually loads of small steps right so it, i mean it's it this i don't believe in coincidences mm -hmm. since that but on sunday we could have i'm going to take um, i'm going to take in any 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 way i mean you know we've, we've preached on pentecost so yeah. many times, I think. and my i focused on that the idea actually we are called to change the world one person at a time right uh, and so so in the book as well it talks about one-to-one -one stuff the idea of actually you know we feel that the task is too big as what you said yeah. but it makes a difference to that person and if we can make a difference to that person then that person makes a difference to another person and so on and so on and then i think that came out of the book and weirdly for today that we're living in it used the word contagious yeah 
Um, uh, and, uh, and the idea is actually, <clears throat> if we just concentrate, you know, find one or two people in our situations where we just concentrate on sort of spreading the good news of gospel, speaking to them about how Jesus has changed their life. One person at a time, uh, that's enough. Uh, and if we all do that, uh, and then they do that, and then they do that, and then it just, like, like a virus, it spreads and it is contagious. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and that's how, that's how the church grows. You know, one one person at a time. I mean, we we're all great for these big events. We you know, go to these conferences yeah. uh, where you know just call a thousand people, and obviously on, on the day of Pentecost, three thousand hmm. gave their lives to Christ. Um, but actually, what what happened after that? How did it? How did that work out? And I think we just forget that we need to work on relationships, one one person at a time, yeah. and then then the church grows. Um, the interesting statistic that came in about atheism um uh, and i don't know how to measure them i have no idea but the number of atheists in the 1970s compared to now has come mm. down okay uh, so i'm thinking okay one how do you measure that but two actually then there is a hold on a minute something's happening you know you think everyone's thinking that the church is declining actually yeah. it's not um there is a there is a there is a searching going on Mm. Particularly with this week, people are searching for meaning, searching for what does this all mean anymore? Um, and, and you find it in Jesus. So uh, I know this is a Sunday school answer. Whatever the question is, Jesus is the answer. Amen. <laughs> but you, you have to believe that. Uh, what are we doing here if we don't? Right. Uh, uh, just um, one of the kind of final comments in the chapters we read this week was about and the church's plan A for changing the world. Like, plan A, it's not the backup option. But I think as church, we need to, one, be reminded of that. Yeah. Two, then act upon it. Like, the church is supposed to be, we are the church, as we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, perhaps by waking up, some of us, to the realities of injustice in our world, to the sin of racism the sin of complicity within what happens then actually we as christians as the church need to make a stand against this stuff like what does this look like going forward because as we're talking about the transformation of the world through the gospel now a huge part of the gospel is this one-to-one -one passing of the good news on but the gospel is also a gospel of freeing the oppressed of breaking chains of moving forward of living free and so part of the good news for all of us needs to be, yes, talking about Jesus, who is the one who changes our lives, who gives us a new reason to live, but also Jesus who came to stand with the oppressed. Like somebody said to me, you know, I, I try to love people like Jesus and deal past it. Jesus tackled with people's prejudices against other people head on. He didn't go, oh, that's nice you feel that way. No, he told them live different, like get over it. The gospel came to change these oppressive things. That to respond like Jesus to this stuff is to challenge it, is to set a new way of living. It's not just love and smiles and hugs. Actually, it's the overturning of tables. I'm not pushing anybody to riot, but actually I'm calling us to all stand up and make our voices heard on this because that is the gospel to social justice. It's saying racism is wrong. It's saying our complicity, our silence for too long has been wrong. It's about saying how can we reach out and support and stand with those who are suffering these yeah, and, and we, we've seen we've seen some of the pictures in there, and I, I like I like the one where um, I think it was in Flint, in America, where the police uh, sort of officer who was I think in charge took off his helmet, took, put down his baton, uh, and said, "Look, I'm here. I'm unarmed. What do you want from me?" And they said, "Walk with us." Yeah. Right. That's what I'm going to do, and we're all going to do it. Yeah. And I think it's with, isn't it? It's not two or four. Yeah. yeah, those are the words, aren't they? We, maybe that what people think of church, isn't it? That you know, we've done two or you, you did this for us. Yeah. Uh, no, it's stand and walk with. Great. Uh, I think that's the, uh, when um, you, you mentioned a while ago, and it wasn't here, but, but uh, something that you, when you did your training to go into the Nightingale, mm. um, we talked about compassion, didn't we? You right. picked up on what someone said about what compassion is, and it's, it's being with. Yeah. Uh, I remembered that. 
Um, so I remember things you tell me, honest. But <laughs> in, and that struck me, you know, compassion, Jesus had compassion, because uh, he, he stood with, and, and he, he was with. Uh, last night's Bible reading was about Matthew 9, where Jesus was with, the tax collectors was with, and he's just transforming their lives, being with them. Mm. And I think that's what we need to do. We, have, we need to stand with, walk with. Um, Listen to. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of us, I think, are we're so keen to want to speak and say the right thing, whereas I think a lot of the lessons that we need to learn, predominantly as white people, was how to listen to these stories of injustice and not be so quick to try and offer our solutions or say the right thing, but to really stand with the pain of that, that we have been privileged to not know a lot of that apart from hearing other people's stories and so in a world where it's so quick to be able to post something online actually who am i listening to why am i who can whose pain whose stories do i need to hear because i have been privileged not to know this in my life do you know and so i think stand with listen to get alongside repent like i think we've been preaching for weeks as we've gone through acts around who can you share the good news of the gospel with how can you be bolder in sharing but how can you also how can you speak out but also stand up stand with those who are, who are suffering because the church is the plan a for transforming the world but it's but it's through love through hope, through tackling these injustices around racism and other oppressions, but particularly this week around racism as we move forward within this. We have good news to share. A God who comes close, a God who wants to be with us in this, but we have got to, we've got to wake up, we've got to stand up, we've got to speak out, we've got to take action in order to truly stand with those who are suffering. And there'll be some of us listening, some people listening to that, and they say, hold on, it's not my fault that I'm white. Right. Okay? And there'll be people, and, that, and we've heard this, haven't we? The idea, well, it's not my fault. Uh, no, it isn't. No. But where you see injustice, where you see prejudice, where you see people downtrodden because of their colour, that's what you are, cannot be silent. Uh, yeah. Regardless. So, so, yes, it's not my fault that I'm six foot four. Uh, blue eyes, uh, blonde, I am your typical, um, you know, white person, another one. And uh, yeah, it's not my fault, but it is my fault if I stand aside. And yeah, I've got all sorts of other stuff going on in my life. But I cho if I choose to say nothing, if I choose to, to, to feel, not feel angry, I can choose that. Uh, it's too difficult, too difficult for me. Uh, to, well, that's my choice. I'm not saying, you know, and that's, and Jesus compels us to, as you say, you know, we, we look at Luke 4, look at Isaiah 61. This is why Jesus came. Read it. Wow. Yeah. We all have a part to play, right? I think so often throughout lockdown, I've been using this kind of phrase of, are you getting fed up or are you feeding up on the word of God? Well, this, well, this week, I think the challenge is becoming, are you frustrated? Are you using this? time to feed up to get educated to read to listen to move past the sense of it's not my problem I've got nothing to do with it but to say no I'm going to make a stand I'm going to get educated I'm going to look at what it actually what white privilege is all about how I can use my voice to actually how privileged am I to be able to say this is not my problem like this is a hundred percent our problem we are part of the problem when we don't take these things seriously right so how do we how do we use our privilege to stand up to speak out to be listened to that we all have a part to play so let's not just get frustrated or dismissive but let's really root into this stuff read up listen to people who deal with these problems like really listen not just try and make yourself feel better it's not having about a savior complex or whatever listen to the pain and stand with it not looking for answers but just to stand with people as we were saying because the church does have something to say but for too long we've been silent on these issues of racism and going back to starfish going back to this one-to-one -one stuff um if you see it going on and and we know <coughs> we know we must we know people uh who have sort of certain views one thing you can do is actually say hold on a minute I'm not, I'm not accepting that. I'm not agreeing. I'm not, 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 not going nodding. I'm not nodding. Yeah. Uh, agree, sort of blindly agreeing with that. No, I'm going to call it out. Yeah. 
and Jesus gives, gives us the spirit that we spoke about on Sunday, gives us the courage to do that. Yeah. Call, it out. Call them out. They may be a long-standing friend mm-hmm. of you, have certain, certain views of things. Call it out. Right. Encourage you. Definitely. Definitely. Right. We all have a part to play. I guess, I guess the summary is, right, we all have a part to play. The church is part of the transforming power of the world. We can all make a difference where we are. Let's not see the whole task, but let's start and see what can I do today, this week, this month, to play my part. All those starfishes, the little boy couldn't do it on his own, but he could start where he was and try and make a difference. I guess that's the encouragement to all of us. Where's your front line? Who are you reaching out with for the good news of the whole gospel? Yes, that Jesus comes close, but also to break the bonds of injustice. I miss anything? What else would you add in as a summary? That's it. That is, we don't need any more. Perfect. Uh, We do need prayer. We need a lot of prayer. Pray for us. Pray for those who are listening. Okay. Uh, uh, And, uh, you know, just, just, yeah, I'll leave it to you. How do you want to say that? (laughs) Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you uh, with heavy hearts, Lord. This has been a, a sad, sorrow-filled, frustration-filled week. A week, perhaps, for some of us where we have only begun to become aware of the racial, racial injustices in our world. Maybe for many of us, we know the pain, the suffering, the rejection, the overlooking that has happened for way too long. Lord God, help us not to stay silent. Wake us up, move us into action, we pray. Would we be people who speak up, who stand up, who speak out, who get alongside those who know all too well the oppressive structures that have held them back? Lord, would we not be complicit? Would we not be silent anymore? Lord, we pray against the sin of racism, the sin of complicity, the sin of silence. Lord, would you help us to respond as you did to injustices, as you did to racism, as you did to oppressive structures. Help us to know how to respond. Move us from silence into action, we pray. Lord God, would you help us to consider where our front lines are? Who are the people that we reach every day? Who might we need to share the good news of the whole gospel with? Who can we introduce to Jesus? Who can we introduce to your hope? Where can we do our part in tackling injustices and tackling racism and tackling oppressive structures? Show us how to use our voices, our actions this week, we pray. Lord God, the local church, the church is plan A for the transformation of the world. Would you help us to believe that? Lord, help us to see your world the same way that little boy in the story saw the starfishes. Help us know where to start, how to play our part, and how to encourage others to play their part too. Lord, would you fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Give us boldness to step up, to speak out, to stand up, to get alongside those who have been oppressed and held back by our structures, by racism, by injustices. Use us to transform this world, we pray. Amen. 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 Powerful stuff, Amy. Challenging Good stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, next week, we, I think we, there's a shift change, I think, because we're, we're on another, we're on a sec, different section of the book. Different... Presence, yeah. Uh, so we're, uh, what are we doing? We are, um, yeah, we are, we are, we get our, so we are Unleashed Presence, That's part right. three, Acts 5, uh, 12 to 25. And so, should we, again, should we do two chapters? Well, Dave, I'm wondering, we usually do two chapters, but this whole section's three chapters. Would it make sense to read chapter 10 as well, so that yeah. Yeah. that's all of part three? So, yeah, so, yeah, the whole thing, the whole of part three, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, we'll do. Uh, the whole of part three, Unleashed Presence. I just read there's Nehemiah in this. That'd be interesting. Um, You've been reading, clearly. <laughs> no, you just saw it. Okay. <laughs> picking a card out of a 52-card pack. Saw his name. Picked him out. Um, <laughs> so, have a, have a blessed rest of the day. I'm sure we'll catch up uh, sometime. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll do it in section three.
Uh, I look forward to it. And uh, yeah, God bless you, Amy. See you soon, Dave. Bye now.